What is going on, everybody? Welcome to another Angle of Pursuit podcast, your fantasy football, sports betting, and NASCAR home. I am your host, Kyle Robert. You follow me on Twitter at NotoriousKRO. With me once again is Brian Twining. What's up, Brian? What's up, Kyle? Man, it after last week's race, I'm I'm excited to see what what's coming here. And I, again, the the disrespect that William Byron continues to see in both DraftKings and in the betting market to me is just it's unbelievable. I just don't yeah. understand it. So we have a lot to get into. Obviously, we're going to talk about the Bushy McBush 400 or Bushy McBush race 400, which is shouts to NASCAR for letting the people decide. But man, that is that is a hell of a name. Uh, <laughs> yeah, last week wasn't so good to us, Brian. Um, your your Kyle Larson top five bet. I think he was over, out of the race within the first like uh, a few minutes. Like I think hey, he made a handful. At of least laps. at least there was no stress. Yes, very true. Um, and then Ricky Stenhouse gave me a little bit to believe in and then ended up crashing and finishing right next to Kyle Larson. So great, great calls by us. Uh, things just things just went really well. And and of uh, course, uh, my continued hatred of Brad Kozlowski comes back to bite us in the ass as yep. he winds up winning the race. So. Yep, I was, uh, I think, a week or two too early on him. So uh, fading Truex was not the move for 95% of the race. Luckily, he crashed it at the end. Almarola ended up uh, winning that. So that was a nice little head-to-head there. Uh, Chase Elliott, not so much over Ryan Blaney. It was interesting. The Truex and Blaney both had a really nice race. Um, in a track where they either do awesome or terrible, and there's not really a lot in between. So, um, well, that's Talladega. Yeah, Talladega it was a fun race. There's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, poor Matt DiBendetto. Yeah. Um, right there again, and just couldn't. It's almost like you don't want to be in the lead at the end because it just, especially like they were talking about Almarola had to drop back, and uh, they were like, you can't be in the front running all that fuel because you're 100 yeah. percent on while everybody else is just cruising behind you um, well you know it much to his credit too look uh my boy kaz Grala wound up with a sixth place finish because he just kind of hung back the whole day yeah. he stayed out of trouble he didn't get any accidents and poof top 10 yeah imagine if he had a kaz Grala top 10 bet that would have been <laughs> that would have been real nice oh uh, i should have pulled uh, the trigger but I yeah no. of course why, why, why not why not? we don't like winning money that's no. that's how it is uh, we are recording this on a Thursday, uh, right before the NFL draft. Brian and I are very excited to see how that shakes out, uh, as well as all the uh, other shenanigans. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, is he going to be a Niner? Is he going to be a Bronco? Is he going to be, who knows? Um, uh, as someone in one of my group chats said, uh, poor Matthew Stafford, he, th- he thinks he's going to the West Coast. He gets to avoid Oof. playing Aaron Rodgers twice a year and, now it looks like he may he may be chasing him down. So that that could be interesting. We'll see what happens with all the quarterbacks. Um, lots going on there, and and Brian and I will have a lot of coverage as soon as that all shakes out. We'll talk about all the all the fantasy relevant stuff. But we're here to talk some NASCAR, um, and let's start with the betting odds for the Bushy McBush race four hundred. Denny Hamlin is your favorite. Uh, followed by Kyle Larson, Martin Truex, the uh, last week's winner, Brad Keselowski. Uh, anything st- jump out initially in terms of outright bets? Um, you know, I it, it is hard here to look at this. I mean, you see Denny Hamlin, he's sitting there as the favorite when this hasn't necessarily been his best track, but he does have two wins over the last few years. So I, I can see why he is the favorite and he has still been probably the strongest car. But if we've seen anything this season during the NASCAR is that every week, it's almost a different driver winning the race. So it, I mean, it's hard to bet the favorite going into a race. So like especially for this one with so many guys inside 10 to one, I'll probably be looking more near that back end for yeah. value and possibly outside of it. Yeah. Uh, for me, there's two names that jump out. Um, and, and they are Kevin Harvick at nine to one who had a really nice race last week. Um, obviously based upon Kansas, um, uh, history and based upon you know this this similar style of track, uh, Harvick has a lot of uh, historical success, but he seemed to fin- figure something out last week. Um, and obviously, 
you know, it not always the stuff doesn't always carry over week to week, especially when the tracks, you know, are, they change up their style or whatever. But um, he seemed to find a little more comfort. The car seemed to perform much, much better. Um, and with his with his history, with his success at this track, I like him quite a bit. Um, and I also like the guy I picked last week in Chase Elliott, another guy with a tremendous track record at this track. Um, if things kind of fall in line and new people are winning each and every week, uh, it could be Chase's week to to take down the take down the checkered flag. And at nine to one, I, I you know I, I I like I like that range. I even like Joey Logano a little bit as much as it pains me to say. Yeah, definitely a no for Joey Logano for me. <laughs> Joey Logano, Brad Keselowski. I will, I will consciously uh, avoid them ever forever in making any any other predictions as far as winning. Yeah, um, Kyle Larson being up near the front, despite starting the back. We'll talk about him when we talk DK, obviously. But a um, lot of lot of success this track, but um, also a lot of uh, you know, it's it's going to be a little bit of a challenge. But obviously, he has the goods to get there if he if he needs to. Yeah, uh, uh, real quick before we get off those odds, it, it, I again going back to William Byron, eight straight top tens. He's starting on the front row, and he's the tenth. He has the tenth highest odds to win at this track for a guy who's finished top ten three consecutive races here. So, it, it if you're looking for like good value for a potential winner that you can place less money on a potential winner, I don't see how you can go wrong continuing to ride the hot streak of William Byron. Yeah, no, I, I'm I like that call. I'm right there with you, uh, Byron. You know, top five, top tens are going to be uh, something that I could definitely see myself getting to on the betting card. Um, obviously, you know, beyond the outrights, is there other drivers you're looking at as potential top five, top ten kind of placement bets that that may make your card this week? Uh, I mean, the odds are kind of, uh, they're not as big or as good as they were last week with Talladega because Talladega, we saw it, that there's just so much stuff that goes hot, that goes on that can change the, the running order where the, as this track is a little more predictive because it's a little bit shorter and it's more predicated on how good the actual driver is, not just the speed of the vehicle. And so, you know, you, it's really difficult to find values in terms of those top threes, top fives for those best racers. So you've got to try to find those guys deeper down and you, you'll talk about them later, but a guy like Tyler Reddick, he's plus money for a top 10. Um, even a Cole Custer or I, I mean, I'll talk about them for DK, but like a Chase Briscoe potentially sneaking into that top 10 market. Like Briscoe is a plus 650 for a top 10. Cole Custer, three to one odds there. Both have decent success at this track. So those are kind of guys that like bets that I'm looking at for Kansas. Yeah. Yeah. I think those are names that make sense. Um, like you mentioned, I, I like Tyler Reddick, obviously starting uh, near that top 10 already. Uh, you can get a nice, you know, plus plus buddy on him to finish in the top 10. You just need him to kind of cruise there all day. And um, obviously his last run at this track wasn't the greatest, but the two before that, he started 23rd, ended up finishing 13th and started 21st, ended up finishing 9th. So those are two nice finishes for him. Uh, Eric Jones is also somebody who really popped up last week. I know. Brian, we uh, we this is something we did last year, and we tortured ourselves, and <laughs> we said we wouldn't go back to it. But uh, he has a nice track record at this track. Um, they clearly figured something out, even though he didn't end up finishing where he needed to. He was running at or near the front for a good chunk, especially towards the end. Um, and obviously, the the wreck at the end kind of eliminated his his chance at a nice day. But um, you know, has a seventh, fourth, third, seventh, and fifth in um, what's that? His last three in five of his last six races. Obviously, he's a twentieth in his October race, but um, has some success at this track. I think is in a, a nice spot to to have another good week. And he's three to one to finish in the top ten. I'm not saying he's going to win the race. I'm not even saying I'm going to bet him top five. But uh, three to one price on a guy who can finish in the top ten. I'm I'm very much on board with that. Um, we can, we can jump over to DK cause there's going to be some crossover and I'll throw up my DK core right now. Uh, Kyle Larson, I, I think I, he's going to, obviously, if you want to, if you're playing GPPs and you want to fade him a little bit, I don't blame you. I think that could be an interesting way, but he's just the, where he's starting, 
his yep. success this track there there's just so much opportunity for him to rack up fantasy points um i i, I think he's going to be hard to get away from uh kurt bush is somebody that i'm very interested in um i i think he has obviously he has a run of success at this track um that makes him incredibly compelling he's also starting um you know towards the back so that's going to make things interesting uh, but this is a guy who one, two, three, four, five of his last seven races found his way into the top 10, uh, even when he's not necessarily starting near the front. Um, so I think he's a guy that can, that can run, run well. And, uh, in the Bushy McBush race, I think you have to, st- you have to roster at least one Bush driver, right? <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. Uh, uh Eric Jones, 7,800. It's gonna, I'm, I was having some issues. It's interesting this week. Um, last week, a lot of the big names were starting near the front this week. A lot of the big names and the high values are starting towards yep. the back. So, um, it was a little interesting finding some values, but I, like I said, I like Eric Jones. I think he's starting to get into a little bit of form. I'm not asking him to win the race. Uh, but I think he has the potential to, to, to get some diff place differential to run some fast laps and to potentially contend for a top five, top 10 type finish. Um, and at 7,800, I'm, I'm very interested in that. And Tyler Reddick is somebody that, um, I'm excited about for this week. Not only had, uh, has he performed decently, um, in having a, a top, a top 10 and a two top 15s and three of his, two of his three races here, but he's also a guy who's had a ton of success on the Xfinity circuit. Um, and at 6,900, like I, I get why he's priced down there, especially because where he's starting, but. I think he's a guy that can run near the front and and get you some fast laps and get you a few differential points um, and, and just have a decent race. And like I said, when I'm trying to dig down and, and find a way to save some money, um, he was one of the names that that came out to me. Uh, Brian, I did want to mention Austin Sindrick is running in this race and he's a hell of a lot more affordable this week. Yes. Um, is he somebody? Obviously, I'll throw up your core here in a second. But is he somebody you you could think you could find yourself mixing in a little bit? I'm glad you you hit on him because he was a guy who I was originally going to place into my lineup. Yeah, but being with the some of the other names that I added into there into my core, I I felt like it would be too chalky in terms of guys that are going to be on the majority of lineup. So I had yeah. to I had to fade Cindric this week for sure. Uh, but yeah, you can, I mean, obviously you'll want to find ways to be different, especially if you're in playing in tournaments. Yeah. Uh, but you know, if you're going to start Cindric and Larson, um, you're going to have to be different, but you can all, but that doesn't mean you can't play Cindric. doesn't mean you can't use Larson. Um, and you could find yourself, you know, don't you don't start with Larson, start with someone else. Um, you know, Denny Hamlin starting 20th, Joey Logano 29th. Um, you know, Chase Elliott 17th. There's a lot of flexibility at the top of the board. So yes. if you don't want to go Larson, <laughs> go someone else and then throw in Cindric. And now, you, now you're being a little unique. Um, and obviously I like to read some of the different articles um, that the, the touts are putting out that the, the smart people are putting out. Cause it's going to give you a good baseline of where everyone's heads at. True. So you know where to find a way to be different and find yep. the, find the names that not everybody's mentioning. Um, so that's, that's also a little, a little hot tip for you there, Brian, but let's throw up your core, um, and take a, take a look at what you got going on. You're right. Rolling with me on Kyle Larson, uh, party Marty 10 K, um, interesting, uh, option this week. Talk to me about him. So it, for me, Martin Truex Jr. It came down between him and Alex Bowman who are both you know, they're, they're both reasonably like around the same price with Bowman actually being $200 more because he's starting a little bit further back in the pack. And, you know, I was going to go Bowman, but I almost felt as if because he is starting like 15 spots behind Truex, he's going to have a higher ownership. And so I went with Truex who over the course of this season, just like throughout the year, he's a better driver in, in general, like uh, on on average. So I want the guy who's been more consistent, who also has been one of the best drivers at this track with five of the last six here, he's finished in the top 10 and three of those were top five. So at $10,000, not the most expensive guy starting 15th. I think he's probably the guy who will be in, all of my lineups and <laughs> yeah, 
uh, Kyle Larson, just starting as far back as he is having the, the car that he has this year and his, his successes at this track with four of his last six races here being in top eight. Um, I think he's, he's gotta be in there in a few lineups. And then of course I got to stick with my boy, Willie B. He's just, he's balling right now. I just don't understand the, the disrespect. And he's like the 13th most expensive driver starting second. Give me that for potential dominator points early. Um, and then Chase Briscoe, I, He's a guy who I was interested to look at because of his price. He's given me that salary savings. He's only $6,000. Um, he's got a win and a top three here in his four races in the Xfinity series. He finished fifth in his only truck series race here. And he's only scored uh, less than 20 drafting points once this season. So that's like almost a, a really good floor to set with that 6K to help me kind of fill in the rest of my lineup. Yeah, no, I think those are all a bunch of names that that make a lot of sense. And, you know, that there's a couple ranges that really um, I think you're going to have some interesting decisions. Obviously, the the upper echelon where we're talking about Truex, Hamlin, Alex Bowman, Joey Logano, uh, Kyle Larson. But then like there's that 9K range that has a bunch of really interesting names that that jump out to me. Uh, as I mentioned, I like Kevin Harvick this week, and I think if you use him as your dominator instead of uh, Kyle Larson, that could be an interesting way to start. You save yourself a little money, and then you have room uh, for for more of those expensive guys. You can squeeze in, um, you know, you can squeeze in a a Logano and a, a Bowman or a Bowman and Truex. Use both of them. Um, I do wonder. Hamlin's been so good. But, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get back to our best bets and, and all that good stuff. But we actually have some decent options to not top five this week at, at some prices. You know, Denny Hamlin, minus 122 to not top five. That's that's kind of interesting. I'm not touching that, man. They, he is <laughs> such a good driver. I am not yeah. betting against him after the disappointment that was Talladega last week. Yeah. No, I, I, hey, I totally get it. <laughs> um, I was just, it was nice to look at the board and, and cause we've been talking about those not, not top fives. I uh, will say, give me, give me Brad Keselowski, uh, minus 159 to not top five. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll bet on that. Yeah. Kyle Larson minus 125, uh, Chase Elliott minus 167, Kevin Harvick minus 167. There's some interesting numbers. Like, I feel like the last couple weeks, especially it's been a lot of like minus 300 minus 400. And those yeah, numbers and I that was the get on basis. Board yep. Yeah. So, uh, that is, that is definitely interesting. Uh, let's finish up with, um, with, with our DK talk and then we'll, we'll finish it out with some more betting and, and our hit our best bets. Um, it's really interesting because there's there's a few drivers like Christopher Bell is somebody that I'm interested yep. in. Can't get to him though. Like I I just like I want to. I don't know. I feel like if you I feel like you can use one of those kind of mid pack guys that are going to give you some salary savings, but you can't use too many of them. Like I couldn't use Bell and Reddick, but I could maybe use one of those guys. Yeah. No. I. I... I'm completely on board with that. And like you said, I think it was last week or the previous week, like trying to look at past races at these tracks when looking at trends is a little more difficult this season, especially because they're not actually qualifying. And I think that is not more, um, it, uh, there's no more fine example of that than this week where you have guys like, let's see, Deba Dettel starting fifth, Austin Dillon starting sixth. You got Cole Custer starting 10th. I mean, and then you have all of those big name dudes starting near the back of the pack with Denny Hamlin, uh, Martin Truex Jr., Kyle Larson, Joey Logano, Eric, I mean, Eric Jones, he doesn't fall in the same echelon as those guys, but you know, so I think in terms of like DK, it's, it's really trying to decide if you want to load up on guys in the back of the pack who can move their way up and kind of surrender some of those dominator points, or do you want to kind of, you know, give up the potential for winning and the movement points for early dominator, like laps led for those guys that aren't as good a driver starting near the top of the field, but yeah. they're less money. Yeah. So unlike Talladega, there, there is a lot more laps. So having those dominators mm -hmm. are, are going to be important, but you might be able to hit on like, if you find the right, like even Ryan Blaney, who's starting seventh could be an interesting dominator. Willie Byron, a guy that you like could be an interesting dominator. Like you could f find a way to target one of those guys who, you know, 
Austin Dillon, Matt DiBendetto. DiBendetto had a great race last week. Um, if he keeps it rolling into Kansas, get him at 7,700, get to get him to lead some laps, then you can have that salary savings to target some of those guys more towards the back. So it's really going to be about finding that option that the guy that can get out, who can lead laps, who can run fast. And if you can find a way to save some money there, you'll end up being, I think, a lot happier with your lineups in the long run. So, um, but yeah, I think, I think, you know, really paying attention to that is going to be, is going to be the critical thing this week. So, Brian, let's focus back on the betting side. Um, and, and, you know, I, I was digging into some of these head to heads. There's some really interesting matchups, but I don't know if that, did you find any head to heads that you're like in love with? Uh, so this week, I don't feel like they, they came out with as many as they have been probably because they're getting killed on these things. But (laughs) like, I mean, when you look at the head to heads, I mean, all of these guys are kind of similarly successful at this track. I do like Kevin Harvick over Joey Logano, but I mean, the juice just isn't there. He's minus 122. That's not something I'm really looking into as much as I love William Byron. Um, Alex Bowman minus one Oh nine to finish ahead of Byron Bowman does really well here. I think that's a potential bet. And then also the Hamlin versus Kyle Larson where Larson hasn't been as consistent, but he does better at this particular track than Hamlin. And Larson has shown this season that he is really good. So I think there's a potential there, but there's nothing that I'm like really betting. Yeah, all those lines are via DK. I was looking over on uh, William Hill as well because they always have some interesting numbers. Um, and if you have access to William Hill, sometimes you can get some really good value. Um, but yeah, I, I'm kind of with you. Like, there's a lot of like I like Hamlin, but I also like Kyle Larson, so I'm not going to really want to bet that. Yeah, uh, mine, you know. And then I was, you know, Kevin Harvick minus 115 over Joey Logano. I kind of like that, but I'd rather just bet Harvick to you know, top five and not even worry about where Joey Logano finishes. Um, a couple of the ones that were interesting to me though, is I do like Tyler Reddick against Kurt Busch. Um, I know I like Kurt Busch uh, for DK, but you can get plus money on Tyler Reddick over William Hill. And I think that's, I think that's cl- a close enough head to head that it's worth getting the positive money. Uh, yes. you, can, you can also get Eric Almarola at plus 125 versus Matt DiBendetto. Um, I think that's interesting. I, anytime I get plus money, I'm I'm pretty much going to be excited about it. Um, and then Christopher Bell minus against Austin Dillon. Bell is minus 150. That's crazy. But that makes me feel a better about my my Christopher Bell could potentially top five or top ten. And, and kind of see how that goes. There was an Eric Jones one, I thought, but maybe I was making that up. I don't know. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. Yeah, Ed, real quick on, on the betting. There is one group thing. I mean, I always try to do this. I pick one of my DK guys that I really like, and I this week um, in on DraftKings Sportsbook, I like Chase Briscoe at plus 280 to finish better than Chris Butcher. <laughs> Chris Busher, 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 Busher. <laughs> Man, that guy. If he ever watches any of these, which I highly <laughs> doubt, he is gonna want to kill me. Um, to finish ahead of <laughs> a put of Busher, Michael McDowell, and Ryan Priest, all three guys who, I mean, Busher is the heavy favorite in this group. Uh, he's got like li- uh, low teens average finish here, but he's plus one seventy five. And then you got McDowell, who he's. He's nothing special here. And then Ryan Priest has only finished, I think, better than 25th once yeah. in his four races here with Briscoe, who he's done fairly well over his Xfinity and Camping World Truck Series races. So I like that with almost three to one odds to finish the tops in that group. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 nice. And I feel like that's a place where he can he can take advantage. So Brian, let's do better than we did last week with our best yes, bets. Yes, please. Let's, let's hit some winners. Um what, what are you looking at? Oh, God. Why do I got to do this? Um, You know, I I just can't. I, I can't be safe. I, I mean, it's pretty close to safe. I really think that, that you're going to see a lot of guys return to form this week. And the guy that I'm picking with this week is I'm going to be partying with Marty. And I'm going to go party. Martin Truex Jr. Top three plus 180 as my favorite bet. 
I like it. Uh, top three plus one eighty. So that's that's a nice little return, uh, and a good way where if you like him, you know, you can bet him to win outright, and then you know hedge a little bit with your top three and um, feel pretty good about it. Um, He's also shoot. close to even money for a top five. So I mean, yeah. <sighs> okay, uh, man, there's some, there's a few things I like. What my best bet is, Chase Elliott, top five at plus one twenty five. Ooh, um, I like gonna, that. It's gonna be my my best bet. Plus money, Chase Elliott, top five. I can take that all day long. Um, Tyler Reddick at uh, plus 350 to top five is something that I'm very interested in. Uh, what was the, uh, Eric Jones to top 10 is like three to one. I'm very interested in that. Um, I will and, also be placing a bet. Uh, Chase Briscoe top 10, six and a half to one. Yeah. Like any of those kind of like, especially if you like them for DK, you think they have a chance to make some noise. Um, uh, I think they could make some sense. Austin Sindrick at eight to one for a top ten is kind of interesting to me. Um, but oh, and let, the, let's also not forget to say I am betting William Byron sixteen. To 18, <laughs> so. I mean that's that's kind of a given at this point. Uh, I mean, your your card starts every week with William Byron because they better believe keep, it. They want to keep giving us these numbers. We're going to take advantage of it. Yep. And if NASCAR's uh, if if the NASCAR shop gets their crap together, uh, I will be. I will be donning uh, some William Byron stuff soon. Yeah, uh, I believe there will be a Christopher Bell purchase in my future. I think, <laughs> I think, I think that's where I think that's where my money and my my fandom is going to go for now. Let's uh, just say that uh, any Bubba Wallace stuff I ordered it back in November. It's still scheduled to ship in in May. So yeah, let's let's just hope. Very uh, very on brand for fanatics. They're they're quite the. Uh, they're quite the the. I don't even know what to say. Uh, and then uh, Elliot and Kevin Harvick uh, outrights are both going to make my betting card. I think I will have Harvick as a top five too. What's his his number? Plus one twenty five. Yep, I will oh, take that beautiful. as well. Yep, um, I will take that as well. It's interesting because Harvick um, and uh, Chase Elliott are the same. Oh, okay, they're both plus one twenty five for top five too. I was thinking it was longer than that, but. Uh, I could definitely get on board with both those guys. Uh, Brian, good luck with the NFL draft. Uh, good luck with your Dallas Cowboys. I hope they take a cornerback. Oh, um, me too. But, you know, Jerry will get it. Uh, Jerry's going to get excited. He's going to trade up. He's going to take out <sighs> the I don't know. It's going to be. And weird. then I'm going to cry. Uh, I hope my Titans get a receiver. We could really use one to go opposite AJ Brown, unless we can get in the Aaron Rodgers sweet six, and then who knows what will happen. <laughs> uh, but enjoy the draft. Enjoy Sunday's race. Enjoy yes. uh, whatever else makes your viewing uh, betting, whatever cards, your DK lineups for Brian Twining. I'm Kyle Robert. We'll talk to you all next time.